Why, hello, this is Robbie from Southern California, and I cannot believe it is February 1st, 2020. Oh my gosh, we're already now well into the year. Well, this is the garden tour, and I'm going to talk about mainly right now what I plan on doing. It's so quiet. All I hear is birds and planes. That's it. Can't stop the planes, helicopters, but no leaf blowers, no nothing. So I thought, this is perfect, perfect timing. It is morning. It is morning and it's over 70 degrees. I hope it holds because if it holds, I have so much stuff I want to do because last spring we had so much cold that we couldn't even plant a lot of stuff until May. So I'm already thinking of planting, but let's walk around the front yard. We're in the front yard right now. This is the onions and they're starting to take off and get some size. So I'll be pulling onions soon. They're overcrowded and I don't want to leave them overcrowded. I did not plant the tomato. That's a volunteer, but you know what? It's so beautiful, I may leave it. And maybe when I'm done with the onions, I'll let the tomato do its thing and I'll put a compost in place container there and it will have more food than it needs. And I might, it may end up with more tomatoes than I need on this chair, just on a chair. Look at the blueberries. Isn't it interesting? They went dormant for the winter, which we're still in. And the two that are growing right now are called Sharp Bell Blueberries. That's the two that are already starting to grow. The other one, which I believe is an O'Neill, yep. That one hasn't really started to show anything except the stems are starting to grow on that. You need to have really two varieties at least of blueberries. And I'm gonna leave them just the way they are. I'm gonna fill up some more Oh, I don't know, matter from the garden around it, maybe some pine needles because it really works well with blueberries and let them do their thing this spring and summer. We'll see what happens, but they are set. I'm not changing them. So the onions are doing good. Now, this is what I find fascinating. I came out here yesterday with all intentions of pulling all the poles down because of course the squash is gone. I'm actually pulling it out and dropping it right back in the container. And when I went to take it down, to my amazement, this tool that I set up a year ago with the occasional hole that probably, you know what, that's perfectly round. That means I made that hole so the tool would sit up there. It's in perfect condition. Can you imagine? This is fabric, perfect condition. It kept all the squirrels and rabbits and everything out. So instead of pulling it down, I decided to just straighten it up a little bit. In these here, these stakes, I'll show you in another video exactly how I put it together. I've got the videos up there. I'll put the link to it. They're in pots. See, all the stakes here are in pots. And then it's, the framework is done with just tomato stakes. It cost me next to nothing to build this. No fencing tool. Now, why are they in stakes here? If you watch my garden tours, tours you will know that where I am in the front yard is a parking lot basically this was a parking pad so it's all cement well I shouldn't say that blacktop it's blacktop let's walk over here and I'll show you see it's all blacktop and here Gary had put some wood chips and this way you know I could walk on here and get some containers on here but the wood chips are breaking down so I can grow right into the wood chips but there's no way to put a tomato steak in the ground here I did but it's really only in there see a few inches but it's starting to break down so beautiful that I plan on getting some things grown right on the ground and maybe put stakes around it I won't even have to use a container if I don't want to I happen to like containers so that's why I have to put my stakes in flower pots and that holds it really secure so it works really good or you can always put the stakes inside the container but I needed a you know a little bit more room there because I've got the swimming pool you know the kitty waiting pool there and I had all that zucchini that were like oh my god they look like submarines they were so big in these two so I'm going to change this up and I will take you with me each one of these containers are not being dumped or changed. I'm going to layer on top and I'm going to have each one with a compost container, a, a you know, with a move, I call them movables because you can pick them up and move them, but each one's going to have a compost in place container in the tub. That's how I'm going to set that one up, especially that one I've already started to set it up. See, and it's going to be like two containers. I'll explain more later. Well, I'll get in here real quick and explain. What I do 
is this is it's not set up please keep that in mind it's going to be sitting in there I haven't decided yet if it'll be in the middle or on the side I'm going to put kitchen scraps and everything in there yes there will be lots of holes in there because I'll need the worms to gravitate back and forth but on the top that one will be another container and I can grow lettuce I can grow parsley I can grow whatever I want on top I lift that one out you know it's hard to visualize but I'll lift that one out and then when I lift it out, I can dump in more kitchen scraps anytime I want. Anyways, that's what happened here. Here's the other one. I just couldn't believe it. This toll, can you imagine an entire bolt? What is it? 40 yards of this stuff lasted for almost a year. March will be a year. This is amazing. So it's staying right like this. It kept the squirrels out. And I'm going to tool it around. This is like a little tool fence. So when I unhook it, it goes across. I need a hard hat. If these things are falling off the tree, and this is really a small one, I really need a hard hat to work in my garden, don't I? Yeah, maybe I should, because that could really cause some damage. But... You know, this is, anyways, going back, I digress. This is just going to be great. So I'm going to fix this up. I will have squash growing around the base of the pool. And then I will have a zucchini. I, when I say squash, it's generally zucchini I grow because I love zucchini. You can do so much with it. You can add it to everything you, you cook. And you can make you can make sweet desserts with it. Or you can use it for dinner and, and add it to meats or any dish you want. I just love zucchini. So anyways, let's keep going. We don't have to sit here too long. That's just an orange tree that was growing in my kitchen window. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. There's nothing in here. I'm going to get this all set up. These onions, again, they need a little more water. And I need to start separating them. Nothing's really growing. Oh, my goodness. A little tiny red vein sorrow is coming up in here. Isn't that cute? And then these are potatoes that came out of my kitchen scraps. We'll have to dump that out and see what's in there. This too I want to reset up. So basically everything here is, needs to be redone. I'm starting, like I said, with all the squash, all the zucchini. Everything will just go right back in there, layered with leaves, kitchen scraps. And, you know, I might put some garden soil or broken down wood chips. If you're doing container garden, gardening and you're getting ready, you know, you can always have two or three inches of potting soil or something on the top. This way it starts to grow really good in there and then it goes in and it will feed its roots on everything breaking down. That's basically it for that. Even this, a year old, what I'm doing here is I'm taking down the shade cloth. I don't need the shade cloth. It was so easy just to close pin it on. And now I'm going to remove it. I don't need it. What do I need it for? I put it there because it was in the hot summer and I thought, you know, I need some shade cloth. So I'm just going to throw that here and get this all off because I don't need the shade cloth. And that's how easy it is when you set it up in your garden like this. Some clothespins and you just take off what you want. These are put on with zip ties. That was actually a bread tie there, but generally I use zip ties. So let me move the shade cloth out of the way. So that's it. So. It, this has just been amazing. I, I, I can't believe how great this has been. This has kept everything out. I need to freshen up some of the things in there. I've had some walking onions in there, some annuals that were in there, and I'll have to kind of clean that up and add to it. I'm not going to take this down because I can service this through the top. The birds can get to this one. I've had some of the white crowns come in and chew on the leaves. They love greens, so they'll come in and chew on the leaves. And that's okay. It doesn't bother me. It's actually just a cutting I stuck in there and it just took off. So I'm going to freshen that up. I've got like a lot of to-do stuff. But if our weather holds up, I've got a lot to do. Let me back up here. The chair does has seen better days got to go through and decide it is loaded with tomatoes but it's really struggling it's kind of getting you know like powdery mildew and all that and the reason is this is not the plant's fault this is my fault is if you step back and see there is the pine tree and the, the palm tree and the sun goes across there and in that span there that's the only amount of sun see there's no sun and we're well into the morning and there's no sun. It doesn't get that much sun. So it's microclimates. I have to think about how I want to do it. Now, 
as summer comes in, it gets hot. The tomatoes just thrive. They get no powdery mildew. They just, I had so many, I still have. It's, even though it's struggling, it's still growing. So placement, and basically placement. It would do good with a lot of walking onions and parsley and different other things in there. Tomatoes, your squash, they need a lot of sun. But all in all, I think that has done fantastic. And I see lettuce in there bolted. There's some stevia in the back. So it's doing really good. Actually, it's doing good considering where it is and how cold we have been. These two all have to be redone, and yet they are still growing tomatoes. Even though they're dying back a lot of it because of the cold, it is still growing tomatoes. And the mint, this is all peppermint. This will come back. I'll cut this back a little bit, and I may or may not compost the peppermint, depending on where I compost it. Because remember, that's the only thing, if you compost peppermint or any mint, when you compost that, it will grow. So you have to think about that. You can almost not you know, eliminate it. So either that goes in the trash or make it really dry out. I don't do hot composting. Hot composting would get rid of that. That's my table. I've been working on my table, doing all my ginger, my turmeric, and I still have to finish a little bit more. There is the purple tree collard that I bought on eBay. This is the one that made it, and I'm still trying to figure out the perfect place for that. Here, my stevia is already making a comeback even in the back there. Want to clean this up. I still have lots of turmeric to pull out of here, not the black turmeric. I already harvested that and I'm going to replant that. But I need to get the rest of the turmeric out so I can see exactly what grew, freeze what I want or dry it, whatever I want to do, and then plant back what I want to plant back. So that's what's going on there. And this is all seeds from the stevia. And I don't know how much is really good seed. There's a little bit of good seed in there because the birds will eat a lot of that, and that's fine. It doesn't bother me. Okay, back in here. Oh, look. I bring these buckets. I leave this next to the sink in the kitchen, and I just throw kitchen scraps in there, all kinds of stuff. You know, anything we're not eating goes in those buckets. And then I bring them out here, and I'm still not sure where I want to put it. So I just leave them. Like I said, it, it can't go bad. Oh, look, squash seeds. It can't go bad. It's just going to you know, break down. And if it dries out and becomes petrified, the moment it hits water, it's going to come back and it's going to be fabulous, fabulous food. Same thing here. I am thinking of where I want to put things. So there's nothing new. I have decided to be ruthless and cut back my old dinosaur kale. This one is five years old now, I guess. And it's doing beautiful there. And because it's so big and it's going through so much, I'm going to just get rid of this limb. Then I can let it grow along the back, but I'll be able to walk here. Because this is ridiculous to try to walk around this thing and, and I've got it held up by an old tomato cage. I don't need it. I'll either do cuttings off of it, and I've done so many cuttings, or I'll just compost it. Either way, it's going to stay against the fence and be there. And I may put my purple tree collar here. That's the problem though. If I want to sit down and enjoy the garden, I could lose my view because the tree collards get massive. That's why I'm still thinking. Lemon verbena, that one never died back. It, it is going a little yellow now. Uh, all the dinosaur kale is doing real good and the red vein sorrel. There's more red vein sorrel. You can separate red vein sorrel. You don't have to do the seeds. It will just separate. Just take a shovel, dig in and separate pieces off and they'll grow, but they're doing really good. Let's back up for a minute here. This lemon verbena has died back, and I'm thinking of trimming it down or moving it. You know, I really don't want to move it because it's done so well, and I use it, use it a lot in the summer for tea. There's a lot of dinosaur kale cuttings there, and look how they're taking off. So everything's doing okay. Even this, this poor tomato plant is at its end of life, kind of, and yet it's still growing tomatoes, and we haven't even picked all the tomatoes, which is fine. They'll go, oh, I did not see this. Look at this! Oh, I've got to bring that in for Kitty. I didn't realize I took some cuttings. <laughs> I walked through here. This was not like here the other day. This must have just basically popped open um, like this overnight. Look at this. I must have put some tiny cuttings in and they're just taken off now. They love the weather. Guess what I got? Oh my goodness. You're just going to take it away. That is sprouting broccoli. All right, let's keep going, because I didn't see that the other day. 
There is my purple sprouting broccoli. I've got to clear the rest of the seeds off. There's no more seeds. I leave a lot of that for the birds. Oh, leaves are falling to the ground. So I want to clear all that off. Like I said, I've got so much stuff going on and here I'm still clearing in the garden and nothing goes in the trash. Remember, this is soil. This is going to not only feed my plants, but it's going to save me money. I could fill that up halfway. Then if I wanted to, you could do it. Get some potting soil or good garden soil. I would go with potting soil if you're using a container. And make sure there's a good holes. The holes, whatever the way you want to do it on the sides or, or on the bottom. Put a top layer of potting soil and as the plant grows, all that will break down. And do add some green to it so you have a mix of brown and green. But it, it works really good. Believe you me, it works. It's been working for me. All right, all the birds want me to leave. Listen. We got toeys out there. Oh, I've got a pair of toeys out there. I think I see spice finches. Oh, yes, and house Oh, they're all out there. Okay, we don't want to spend an hour on the birds. I just want to do a quick walkthrough because I'm telling you what I'm going to do. So we're still feeding the birds. More tomatoes are, are kind of growing. But, you know, like we've had cold weather and tomatoes are not really, my tomatoes are not really thrilled with cold weather. So they're still growing. So I'll have to decide when the time comes if I'm going to be really ruthless and take them out and start fresh or just cut them back and let them come back. That is collard growing inside these old dog kennels that we had got once. This came from a groomer. They threw them all out, the white ones. Some people ask what they are. Years ago, my daughter knew a, a pet store had gotten rid of them. They redid their grooming room and Gary went and picked them all up. A friend of mine said, wow, they're worth thousands of dollars. You can sell them or do dogs in them. I said, I'm not putting dogs in kennels. Number one, I don't want to do dogs. <laughs> and number two, I didn't want to sell them. Who am I going to sell them to? I, we, Gary turned them into planters and it worked out really, really well. Better than going to the dump. They had it piled up and it was going to the dump. All right, so we've got sprouting broccoli growing. You've got celery coming up from, you know, seed that I did not plant. This looks like it's a red one. Nope. And then I've got spearmint growing all over. What you see there is spearmint and all that is spearmint. I'm going to cut it back, not cut it out. But I do want to cut it back so I don't step on any snakes in the summer or late spring when they start coming out. When the weather gets really warm, snakes come out. We have a lot of gopher snakes that do come in here. I shouldn't say a lot. You'll see the gopher snakes. But, and I don't mind them at all, but you know, rattlesnakes are in the area because we are near some hills and the opportunity for them to come in here is here. So I have to be aware of them, but I have never seen one in my garden. But just in case you don't want to take any chances. So I will cut it back and make sure that wherever I walk, I can see where I walk. Pepino is starting to really throw a lot more flowers. The flowers are starting to pop out. And I want to do some cuttings off of this too. This is the only pepino that's growing in my yard, just this one, but it's thrown so many pepinos. And it's not something I use a lot for cooking, but it is really cool to grow. Gary does, he eats them like fruit. He likes them, he says they're sweet. I guess everybody's got different tastes. They don't taste super sweet to me, but you know, they're not bad. I do, I do like them and I've actually put them in stir fry. And there's all my water fountains, remember, Almost all my water fountains, except for this one and the big one, are all solar. And look at their running. Almost all of them are running. I've got them kind of turn the solar panels different directions. So not all of them actually run at the same time. My bucket up there just started. And now I've got this one. The bees like this one because there's so many rocks in there that the bees can land on there, as you can see. And they like it because where they can go in and they can get to the water without drowning. This one splashes too much, and because there's so much of a splash, the bees don't like that. The one in the back, they can take it or leave it with the rocks. There's some bees in there now, but the birds actually love that bowl with the rocks. All kinds of birds go to that with the rocks. Then I've got my curry plant that's still growing. I've never used that. I liked it. It was like this tiny little plant that big, and I liked it, and I put it there. So let it do its thing. It looks pretty. It smells good, but I just haven't used it yet. I should. I should, but I use a lot of herbs now. A whole lot of herbs I do use. Let's see what else. Celery is still growing. Some of it is the old celery. That's actually an old one. See the seed head on top? This is the seed head. This whole thing. 
Well, I've been starting to cut it out and now it's coming from the base. It's regrew. So you don't have to, if you're in an area, you're not getting snow, you don't have to take it out totally. It will come back into a big, beautiful plant. Let's see, let's turn over here real quick. Yeah, all this needs to be cleaned up. All this needs to be cleaned up and I am working on it. I want to get rid of the sweet potato down there. That came up from the compost and get some serious things in there. Maybe some sage in there. I don't need that much sweet potatoes. Gary grows sweet potatoes. I don't need to grow them there. Lemon verbena is still in the original pot. I may change that up too this year. And then walking onions, a lot of times I just stick them around because I find them all over the yard, the little ones. And I don't want them to die because they'll dry out. So I move them and put them in these containers here. Same thing here. I've got to get all the sweet potatoes out. Again, something else I did not plant. And I've got to figure out on the sunwise. If I'm going to get a lot of sun here, I think I want to put a zucchini in here. And I can easily put a compost in place bucket in there. So I just dump my kitchen scraps and let it do its thing. And I think I am going to do that. Oh, look, the beans are coming back. I've got green beans growing here. Oh, so it's telling me the weather's good, probably. I sure hope so. It has been so cold, I would love to see it stay warm. Like I said, in the 70s, right now in the morning, it's beautiful. All this needs to be cleaned up. I don't need to leave an old green Swiss chard that is so old that all it's going to throw is this because it's, it's root bound in there and I'm going to change those up. These, I get a lot of people asking me about these upside down patio gardens. I don't even think they make them anymore and occasionally you'll sign, find people selling them and they're asking now $100 to $150. New in the store, I think they sold between $50 and $65. And to be honest, look at this. This is all you get. It's, I would say it's a waste of money. You can make your own better with a container and a chair. Let me tell you, I only have them because I, I told the story a hundred times. I got them for like $2.50 and $5 when Walmart wanted them out one day. It's the only reason I have them. I would never have put that kind of money out, not me. There is the tree colored and that's why I don't know if I want to put the purple one in the front of my garden because I'll lose the view. I mean, look, this is what I'm going to see when I walk into my garden. And it shades out so much because they're so big. Now, yes, I can control it and I can cut it up. And I should do a lot of cuttings off of it. And I will probably. But it's just the green one. It's got touches of purple in it. But it's just the green one. But see what it did here? It shaded this container. So something would have to go in here that really likes a lot of shade. And I'm not sure what or I trim this back. So I have to decide on what I want to do, but I also know that the birds go in there and hide in there. So that's something I've got to think about because they like going in there. They don't do too much damage to it. Gary loves it. I take those leaves and I brush them with a little, sometimes a little oil with a little hot sauce and I throw them in the oven for a couple hours on the lowest, lowest setting. I leave the stem on, it's so funny. See the stem, how big the stem is? I just lay it on a big cookie sheet, leave the stem on, and then Gary goes around with it in his hand and just munches on it. So I don't know yet what I'm going to do, but there are two of them back there. You've got the giant one there. Oh, this thing is like 12 feet tall now. And then I've got another one in the back. And then a, there's another one there. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with the purple one. I want a special place for it, but I'm just not sure yet where. This is what a compost in place bucket is. I'm going to pull all this out. Continue doing my thing in there. It's probably got all kinds. It's really so it's not that set. Let's see what's underneath. I have no idea what's underneath. Let's see if I can lift it. Oh yeah. Uh oh, look at that. There's a grub in there. And there might be earthworms. I don't know. I'll we'll have to see. It's hard to see because they may be in the bucket right now. But there are there is a grub down there. So I could, you know, and the other thing I could do, I could change it, I can add to it, I can take some of that soil and put it in another container so I can mix it up because that's all broke down. There was yard waste in there, you know, leaves and different things like that, and there was kitchen scraps in there. Then I put the bucket in, and I really like the bucket because you can close it and just throw your kitchen scraps in there and it feeds those containers. And I've gotten a lot of squash off all this. So that's why I'm going to do a lot of that. Isn't that beautiful? Of course, the plane's coming by at the same time the bird is singing. 
So I'm gonna see how I'm gonna set up the yard, but now as the weather's warming, I'm gonna do a whole lot more. This is that old collard plant. Look at that, it was in a pot, it escaped. It broke the pot, that's fine, it's just a plastic pot. And it's all over, it's like a maze. I mean, it just goes all over, it intertwines back here. This is where, the, if when the rabbit's here, it hangs out underneath because it knows it can eat. It can sit up there, you know, underneath here and eat and no hawk's gonna get it because it's got all this stuff above its head. So it's kind of a safe place for them and it looks really cool. And then we set up this bird stand with the cage talked about this before and the reason the cage is here it's open the birds can go in and out of there in fact while I was walking through it was loaded with birds they can go in and out of here and feel safe because look how big the wire is and no hawk can get them because the hawk has got to come down and swoop and they cannot swoop through here so this is another way you could feed birds if you've got a hawk issue okay here I am composting all the leaves from the papaya little by little and even from collard, so I'm gonna keep doing that in there because it's feeding this papaya next to it as it leaches into the ground. The papaya, of course, has left that container. The roots are deep in the ground, and we are just loaded with papayas on these two plants. Isn't that amazing? This is strawberry papaya. So this is, I don't know what's the right way to do it, but you know what? It works for us, so it's fine with us. Tomatoes growing back here. It's, the strawberries lasted. So we'll see what happens with the strawberries, if I'm going to get more or what I'm going to do. And we've got tubs back here. I can't grow a lot in this corner. That's why I really have to think about it. I, I could move the tubs because when that moringa tree back there, which is full of pods, fills in and all the leaves come back, it really is so shaded back here, if you can see that. It's just like a jungle back here. I mean, the birds like it. And the birds love the moringa. Oh, it is already sprouting. Oh, that had to have popped up between yesterday and today. Look at the leaves. I can't believe that it was not there. I came out here, they were not there. The tips are sprouting. I'm hoping that means Mother Nature is telling me we're done with the cold weather. Wow, February 1st and we're done with the cold weather. I'm excited, I'm excited. Okay, so anyways, going back to what I was saying, this corner is like a jungle and it's so shaded. Oh, I should clear this corner a little bit, get rid of the tubs and put a little chair and table in there. So when it's 100 degrees, I have a place to sit. Maybe I will, I don't know. But anyways, I have to think about what I plant here. And I have tried some squash and it's not gonna grow. Zucchini, tomatoes, peppers, a lot of your plants like that need a lot of sun. And if they don't get a lot of sun, then it really bothers them. The squash won't grow here, but your collard will. There's other things that will, and of course the papayas do, because why? They are just gonna keep going up and reach the sun. They're reaching the sun. Even the small ones underneath are just taking off. Look at these. These were the little ones I said I was gonna you know, compost and just get rid of. And I compost all the leaves back. And they're taking off, all of them. So I don't know, they're gonna grow just like this and grow a whole bunch and they're gonna reach the sun and do their thing and that's fine with me. All right, this corner, eh, there's still some tomatoes. I did nothing with this last year. Again, problem is it doesn't get that much sun. So I have to think about what I wanna put in here. I've got some mint growing and of course, I've got some of the green and red Swiss chard and celery coming up. We're gonna walk in here for a second just for a second, but I'm not gonna really do anything in the room right now. I think that thermometer is wrong because it's 70 outside. Oh, it might be, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, Gary's gonna, he's putting something together on this and he's gonna explain what he's doing in here. But this is amazing. We've had peppers all winter. Look at this. I pick them, they grow back. Look at this, look at this. I pick them and they keep growing back. So next year, I'm gonna make sure I have a whole bunch of pepper plants and I'm gonna have them in this room. And the Moringa, he grabbed it off the deck because they were starting to die back. This one he didn't grab in time. And this has just taken off. This is beautiful. So we've got leaves and Moringa growing just all winter. So the, he'll explain more on the room. There's more behind me and he's gonna do a whole thing on the room because I personally don't even know what he's doing. 
I can ask him, he can tell me, and I think, yeah, let him do his thing and he can show me when he's done. All right, let's go through the gates here into the parking lot. I don't even know what you call this. I would love someday to plant a whole bunch of trees. And yes, the citrus tree, let's see if we could do this without falling down. You don't want to see me roll down the hill. Some of you are going, yeah, yeah. Um, I, can't, I can't make a dent in that tree. I cannot make a dent on the, in that tree. It is loaded, absolutely, look at that, loaded with mandarins. There's hundreds, probably a, over a thousand there. And the same thing with the other citrus trees there. Now, a few of you have asked me, why aren't you picking them and donating them to the homeless or wherever you, you know, to donate them to? Here's the problem in the areas in Southern California. A lot of areas, you're not allowed to move citrus. It is actually against the law. So I am not taking any chances, whether I'm in that area or not, to move it because Southern California has got an issue with moving citrus. So the best thing to do is to leave it. What I did do is I've got a massive tree growing against my neighbor's property, which is growing into his property. And I talked to him yesterday and told him, take all you want. And he was so excited. Are you sure? Yes, because that is on his property. And that is perfectly legal for him to pick because it's growing on his property. So that is the reason I cannot move the citrus and do anything with the citrus. And if people are doing it, you've got to be careful. It's a massive fine. Oh my goodness, papayas everywhere. A couple of those mm, got hit by the cold, so they're a little, got some mold going on. So either Gary can pick them and use them green or do what he wants with them. But now with the warm weather and if it dries up nice, we should do really, really nice. Look at all these. Again, with the papayas, as you know, papayas are heavy, heavy feeders. So not only do they need sunlight, they need a lot of food. And when I say food, I don't mean you have to go buy it. Food is breaking down matter from your garden. If you can get a container growing next to your papayas and throw all your scraps from your garden in there and kitchen scraps and their own leaves and if a papaya rots, throw that in there, it will feed them and they will grow. This one is one that I dragged out of my garden, I think early last year. It's starting to finally really set into the ground. It is in the pot. It doesn't matter, the roots go into the ground. It's got its own container now. The same thing here, this one's got that container. So that gets matter in there, that celery that grew, that's all going back into the same container. And it's feeding this papaya plant, which has got a papaya on it. And then I've got the little one that came up next to it. So it's all going to feed off of that container because that container's got holes. And I actually only put the holes on this side. So when I water that and that matter breaks down, it's going right into the soil here. Let me see if I can get down here and show you. It's going in here, it's all wet, see? See the roots? See the roots? The papaya is sending it's roots there even to get, or whatever plants are around here, are sending their roots near there because they know how good that is. So it runs out, all, it's like a compost tea. It runs out and it feeds the plants. So if you've got papayas, try that. Because I know I've spoken to some people and they have told me that they have papaya plants but no papayas. And when I've told them, get some compost containers next to them, take care of them and you will find out when you start filling those things up and watering it, I don't care if you plant in them or leave them bare, just water it because it will rot down. The earthworms will come there, all microbes will come there, all kinds of insects will get in there and they're breaking that down and feeding the papayas. And guess what? They come back to tell us, oh my gosh, we now have papayas. So all you have to do is remember papayas are heavy feeders, feed them and they will grow. Okay, let's go take a look at the wall. Okay, as you can see, I have done nothing with the bathtub, but I am loading in leaves. Same thing here. I'll probably chop that back. Oh, seeds starting to grow that have been left in here. Squash, the tomato I think has seen its day, even though it was beautiful and still growing tomatoes. I may cut this back or trim it back really hard and see what happens. The Moringa, this one never went completely dormant. This one all all, well, I shouldn't say all winter because we're in the middle of winter, but you know, all fall and even with the cold weather, it still had some leaves on it because of the wall. This is a microclimate. That wall is quite warm. And so it helps that plant retain, you know, extra leaves and get some 
extra warmth to it. Because when the sun beats on it, then it gives off heat all day and all night. So it really, really does help. Here I've got some mint growing. Isn't that something? That mint never dried, died back. That's chocolate mint. Eggplant. That's a big egg. I did not plant that. That came up on its own. And it is growing eggplants. And it's small white ones, actually, kind of a white purple. And then there's just Swiss chard. It's got to be cut back. Now, these containers, I'm going to probably compost all of the squash plants back. These are squash seeds that came up in the containers. I'm going to do a whole video on this because I really want to explain this. All these squash. See, there's even a big one left there. And here's one I just picked. That big one, not this one. This one got left in the dirt, but that's fine, still edible. All of these squash grew with no soil. And I will get into that on my next video in detail. No soil. Purposely? No. No, no, no. It was an accident. I was composting in these containers. I was thinking about what I wanted to plant in there. I had no intentions of planting a bunch of my own seeds, which was fine, but they were hybrids, which they shouldn't have been. Another story for another time, because they did come off a purebred zucchini. I didn't even grow any other squash this year. That's, an, like I said, that's another story. And all these containers grew. Big, massive plants. You saw in that last video a few months ago when Gary was harvesting them, we had a massive pile here and it grew with no soil. I never got a chance to put soil in there. Amazing. And there's the truck bed. Yes, there was no avocado tree in there. I've had a few people say, what did we do with it? Well, Gary had plans with me to kind of build an arbor and get squash in here, but I'm going to say that this is growing so beautiful just the way it is. Nothing bothers it. There's no insects in here. I guess the birds kind of hang out, do their thing right away, and I've got red Swiss chard growing. I've got green Swiss chard growing, and then the mixed red and green Swiss chard, and then a little bit of garlic chives and stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm thinking of painting up the truck bed and cleaning it up and maybe putting containers inside and doing different things this spring. It's really far from my garden. Not that it's too far of a walk for me to do because I love walking and coming through here. I'm just trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with it. And I don't know. And I don't have to know. I can decide because I can tell you I'm going to do a big thing with corn and everything. And then tomorrow I think, no, I, I want to do it this way. So I never know until the moment I come out here. I, I, my brain is always working on what I want to do. And then it's kind of like, like an old flipping through index cards. It's like trying to think and then all of a sudden it stops and goes, that's it. That's what I want to do. So I'm not sure, but right now, you know, last year the rabbit raised its babies in there, got in there and it raised it in the corner and nothing is bothering it. And I come out here and I've had Swiss chard for months now right out of this beautiful truck bed. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And then it's so peaceful here. I should set something up and sit. And I do sit out here. There's my apple tree. Came up from seed in my compost on the deck. I actually had opened up some apples and there were seeds growing a few times and I threw them in on my deck. Just dropped them in there. I didn't expect anything and they grew and I was going to compost them and I cannot believe I just dropped them out here in Gary's pile of wood chips. It's got new growth. I don't know what I'm going to do with them but I planted them and they're growing. And yes, there was some garlic chives in the container on my deck when I put it there so the garlic chives are growing. Same thing there, another apple tree from a seed. There's a loquat came up in the truck bed. I moved it there just literally with a shovel. Boom, threw it there. Didn't expect it to live, it did. And then Gary brought me a nectarine tree. And I just stuck this here. And I really just dug a hole, dropped it in and just put it here. I don't know if it's gonna make it, but we grow these nectarines. I don't know what type of nectarine it is, but the seeds are all over the yard and they grow. And within two years, the tree is covered in nectarines. And I rarely see nectarines. I don't know, he doesn't bring them in. And I have to go hunting for them. Critters probably get them before I do and the birds. But if I plant this nectarine here, you know, and, and which I did, and if I want, I can take care of it and get some tool around it. And I can cover and get my own nectarine. So we'll see if it makes it. And I am thinking of maybe getting, I can't do a lot under the pepper tree and I don't want to eliminate the pepper tree. So I can do a lot of, trees here and maybe I can come out and do another layer of trees. I'm kind 
kind of deciding on what I want to do. And maybe I'll even put some more trees. I can even put something in the corner there. Little by little, no hurry. And then of course the avocado that came up from the wood chips, still doing good. Gary put a basket around it. We did not plant this, but this one came out of the wood chips. There was a pile of wood chips they brought and there was some sort of avocado uh, leaves and branches and apparently there was a pit way down underneath. So we may end up having an avocado tree here. So that's it for today. I hope you're going to see lots of changes coming in the next two weeks, four weeks, because I've got plans. And then down there, you know, Gary's got his bees and Gary's garden is down that trail that I walked. You have to walk all the way down there and continue on down. And then you get to Gary's garden. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this and you go with me and see the changes I do. And don't forget, no matter where you are, if you're in a warm area, a cool area, if you're in the United States, I know you're going to have spring here. Isn't that beautiful? If you're going to have spring here before you know it. Start getting your seeds that you want to start on your own, in your own house. You can start growing them on the windowsill, different places. And don't forget, it doesn't matter whether you grow your own seeds or go to the nursery and buy plants, whatever, get something planted when the time is right and get some good homegrown food into you. With that, have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. And then of course we have Kitty's garden and I have been picking broccoli. There's been a little bit of broccoli growing in hers as well. And I have been bringing it to her. Remember when I watered that, I don't have to water the container on the bottom because it runs through on the holes. 